¿Qué tal? Soy Nicolás Fishman de Suprapixel. Seguimos en HyperX, acá en California. Acá estamos con el señor Tyler, que es el Business Audio Manager. Básicamente se encarga de toda la parte de audio dentro de lo que es HyperX. Y si bien el Revolver S, o Revolver S, como le quieran decir, ya salió al mercado, tiene cerca de unos dos meses y tal vez un poquitito más de tiempo, es relativamente nuevo y tal vez ya han visto reviews por ahí, lo cual está genial. Acá, más allá de hablar un poco acerca de lo que es el producto en sí, no va a ser un review completo, después ojalá pueda terminar de hacer uno en casa, tranquilos, si puedo hacerlo lo voy a hacer. Pero la idea es hablar un poco acerca de cómo es que se llega a diseñar este producto, del tema de la ergonomía y esas cosas que solamente le podemos preguntar a ellos de forma directa. Así que arranquemos. Ok, so, Tyler, yes. thanks for the interview. Uh, what can you tell me about the design process of the Revolver S? And then we are going to go about the features and all that inside this headset. Sure, yeah. So there, we launched our first headset April of 2014. Uh -huh. And with our first original HyperX Cloud headset, the main differentiator from our product and our competitors' products is that we really focused on comfort, first and foremost, right? So I can attest to that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Very comfortable <laughs> headsets. Um, a lot of our gamers and our fans are wearing them for six, eight, ten hours a day. They need something super comfortable. So we put memory foam in the headband, memory foam in the ear pads. We made a really good design that fits really well on a large majority of different types of Uh, consumers' heads. Um, and so when we were designing our next version of the Cloud 2 and then now the uh, the Revolver, we wanted to make sure that comfort was first and foremost. Um, so we used really plush, extra dense, high premium quality memory foam here, even better than what we used in the Cloud and Cloud 2. Mm -hmm. And we also added memory foam here. But the, com the comfort that we offer goes beyond just the memory foam. It also goes the way the headset sits on your head, how the pressure is distributed, how the weight is distributed. So really it's um, more like HyperX signature comfort than just the signature memory foam. Mm -hmm. So we focus on that first and foremost. We test a lot of different head shapes and sizes and different age groups, male, female, to make sure that we had a good fit fitting headset. First. How do you actually do that? You use focus groups, you use uh, consumers and customer feedback? Yeah, so a couple different, all those things basically. So we rely on our partners overseas, a lot of our manufacturing partners who have a lot of experience um, with different mechanisms of, of installing and building these headsets so that they have basically uh, model heads. You know, you put the headset on, it tells you how much clamping force is being applied, uh -huh. which is the pressure the headset applies on your head. And then we bring in, yeah, our esports teams, 40 different yeah, esport organizations we sponsor all around the world. We bring focus groups, players into this place where they get to try on the headsets and tell us what they like or don't like about it. We go to gaming events, we have people try them on and then take surveys. Uh, we do social media polls, we ask our own internal employees, so it's it's all those things combined to get the widest set of data. All of this is done before the release of the final product? Before. Oh, so in like a prototyping... Uh... Research and design, basically, yeah. Oh, that's, mm -hmm. that's really cool. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so we led with comfort first and foremost, and then um, durability is also a really important feature in our headsets. So a lot of gamers gave us feedback that uh, the headsets they had been using before broke really often, and they were sick of having to replace them every six months to a year. So we used an all-steel construction here, so it's very durable. Um, if you throw it down because you get upset or you accidentally step on it or something like that, it's, it's, it's meant to withstand that kind of abuse. Do you actually test that? Mm -hmm. on your facilities. Yeah, it's called a drop test, actually. Um, so yeah, they put it under different pressure and they see, okay, is there anything, any part of this headset that's exposed that can be damaged if it's having one of those situations? Plus, um, what we talked about before is the focus groups. We actually give out units to people before they ever make it out to the real world and actually have them like try and break it. So then that way we start identifying these issues sooner rather than finding out three months or six months or a year after the product. And it's actually been extremely helpful. We've made changes based on that, that experience. Um, so yeah, we hit durability really hard on this one as well with the aluminum frame and really well-protected ear plates. Um, it's got a braided cable throughout. It's got a really high quality microphone. So all those little things, I think, add a nice value to it. Uh, but the biggest single feature I'd say, besides the durability and the comfort, is the sound. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously it's a headset, it provides great sound, but what we were looking for on this revolver was to give the uh, end users um, an advantage during gameplay. So what that means is that they're, we were able to tune the drivers, so they're able to identify sounds better with our headset than with our competitors' headsets. So if you're playing Counter-Strike Go or Overwatch or a first-person shooter and you want to be able to identify, oh, where did that shot come from or that grenade or where's that player, I want to hear their footsteps, it's difficult on an entry-level or mid-range headset. You just don't get that level of sound quality. 
So what we did is we built really high-end drivers and we tuned the treble way up so that that way you're able to have an increased sound stage, which means that maybe before you could hear this much with mm -hmm. your normal headset. With our headset, you can hear this much. The more you can hear, the better you can hear, the sooner you can react and the better you can play. Well, actually, one of the phrases I've said many times during headset review of every single brand I, I can fathom right now was that, yeah, uh, they are very comfortable, uh, they look nice, uh, but you can't use them for, for music. I mean, mm. you can use it from the, for gaming, but not for music. And uh, as far as I can see, maybe you're going probably this way with the Revolver S. Like, uh, you can use it for anything you want. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a great point. Um, we definitely tried to make as balanced of a sound as we could um, while focusing on more of the high frequency. So this, this headset really shines, if you're listening, if you're not using it for gaming, really shines in like an orchestra type music where there's all these individual instruments. So you get a lot of really clear sound separation and positioning. So if you're in, if you're imagining listening to an orchestra type music, you're going to hear the different instruments coming in different parts of, um, of the sound spectrum and you really get more of that Um, immersed sound experience, I would say. And what does exactly uh, come in the box with the Revolver S? Yeah, good question. So we have our stereo version, which uh, came out in 2016, uh -huh. um, which is a great product. And what we did is we just wanted to step that up a little bit. This is the big brother to the stereo. So what we did is we actually changed these ear cups to be matted and rubberized, uh -huh. uh, more of a high-end premium feel. We widened this headband. And then the biggest differentiator um, that comes in the box from the stereo version is actually this USB dongle. Okay. So this is where your 7.1 Dolby surround sound is. You can toggle that on or off. You've got your headset volume, your microphone volume. Oh, so mic you got mute. mic input uh, volume for the, separately. Exactly. So it's all built in and it's all accessible really easily. Um, what a lot of our fans were saying is that they were using software solutions from other companies and they were getting annoyed having to exit their game and go into the software and change the setting and then go back to the gameplay again. So we basically took all the great things that are in software and built them into a dongle, which is uh -huh. more reliable, more consistent, more tangible, easier to feel. Um, we also built in three equalizer settings here. So if you push this left button, you can change from a flat equalizer, you know, equal bass and treble. Yeah, yeah. You can go to bass boost if you really want to pump the bass up, or you can go to vocal setting, which really highlights that high mm -hmm. frequency. Um, So again, we took all those things that people do like about software, um, and we took out all the annoying things like compatibility or updates or um, having to exit the game, and we built them into this dongle instead. So what you do is you just take your uh, four pole, if you prefer to use a stereo connection or you're using a console, and then you want to use the Dolby, you just plug in here, and then this USB plugs into either your PC uh -huh. or it also works with your PS4. So that's pretty unique to have a a hardware Dolby 7.1 solution for both console and PC. So this is actually Dolby certified? Yes. Uh, yeah. You have in-house audio engineers uh, We do for, for all your audio products? We do. Um, most of them reside overseas, but we do uh -huh. have a few guys that work here in our lab who are specialists and are really have been in that industry for a long time and they break apart the headsets and they're really trying to understand the mechanical engineering, the acoustical engineering, the industrial engineering and also how the design of the headset affects the sound, because it does. If you, put, if you took the same headset and changed just the ear pads, yeah, you, would get a, <laughs> you would get a different type of sound response from yeah. it. So um, ever since we really started realizing that we had a legitimate space in this business is when we really started investing. So that first year we were testing a lot of models. We were like, oh, how's this gonna work? And where is it gonna sell? And what price point? And um, how popular is it gonna be? But by the time we launched the Cloud 2, we had already sold around a million units, and we're like, wow, okay, we found an angle. We these found are so, yeah. these are working, <laughs> yeah. So that was when we built this office, and we invested in more resources, and our personnel grew, and our, we invested more into engineering and design, manufacturing. We're working closer with our partners than we ever did. Um, on our newest headset, we have something really cool that's exciting, um, can't talk about yet, but something that's unique, that's never been done before. So we're really trying to step up our game and show that we're a legitimate brand in this space and that it's something that we're going to continue investing in for a long time. Okay, so uh, taking uh, the idea of stepping up your game mm -hmm. as much as you can for each 
product iteration. Yeah. Uh, where do you want to go with the audio products? I mean, just like I know this is a generic question, mm. but and and that you can't answer it like in a concrete product specific uh, answer. Yeah. But uh, where are you aiming? Do you, do you want to just um, do you have like uh, the the ergonomics and the and the comfort just figured out? And you are going to uh, go uh, with audio quality mm. uh, or something else? Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting. So we have the one part of our product roadmap that's kind of missing right now is wireless. Uh -huh. So we can't, yes. yeah. So no no firm <laughs> details on yet, yet, but that's yeah. obviously something that's missing. So you can imagine that we're um, actively looking at that. And with wireless, um, there's a lot of potential pain points for customers, um, whether it's connectivity or battery life or yeah. range or issues with software or compatibility in general. Yeah, interference. There, all those interference, exactly. So we're actually spending a lot of time studying user interface, user experience with wireless products first okay. before we ever launch something to the market because the worst thing we could do is just rush it and put something out that we think is okay. We really want to make sure that the end user experience is really high. Um, so wireless, I think, is definitely something that we're interested in. In terms of overarching themes in audio, I think you'll always see us go with something that's going to be comfortable, durable, versatile, and, and have a great value. Yeah. Um, so we're not going to always be the cheapest headset. We probably won't be the most expensive. I think we're always going to be in that mid to high range. But what we're always going to do is try and give the customer more for what we're, what we're charging than what the competitors are doing. So that they feel like, wow, I'm really buying into this. I'm excited about this new headset I'm going to buy because I'm getting um, a really great value out of it. So that they continue to want to buy other products from us because we want to. We want people to have our entire ecosystem. We want them to have the SSD, the DRAM, the headset, the mouse, the keyboard, the mouse pad, and who knows. You're offering that. everything you can. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And. Um these design changes you've mm. made from the Revolve to Revolve S, mm. uh, were they made because you uh, thought that, well, maybe we should like make this bigger or this mat because this just looks better or because of the focus groups and customer, support, uh, customer feedback? Yeah, great question. So both, actually. Um, so one of the things is that we actually launched the stereo version first uh -huh. on purpose because we wanted to see what people liked and didn't like about it. So we spend a ton of time um, combing through end user reviews, not just on like popular e-tail sites, um, but also going through Twitter and YouTube and Facebook and Reddit and actually trying to get an idea of what the end users are saying about oh, our so products. So you actually go to forums mm -hmm. all the time. The real people. We're, we're listening. For, yeah. We're always listening. That's great to know. Um, so what we saw was an opportunity where people said, um, the headset's great, but it, sometimes they felt like the pressure at the top of the head was a little too high. So this is actually a thinner headband on our stereo model. So we widened it. And what uh -huh. that does is that disperse, disperses the pressure a little bit more evenly. Um, some people, when they put the headset on, said that you would get like a, a reverberation sound or a ting um, when you would adjust this or you'd hit this. And I'm not sure why people do that, but they do. Um, so we added this, what we call a dampener here. And that reduces that um, noise reverberation. So it's not just like Aesthetics, it's a feature. It's a, yeah, it has function. <laughs> no, exactly, it has function for sure. Um, and then on the ear cups, I think it was a combination. So it was two things. One was we wanted people to be certain when they were wearing stereo or Dolby, okay. uh, which one they had. So that if you were watching someone on stream or watching someone in an esports tournament or just your friend playing somewhere, you'd be like, oh, he's got revolver S's. And then the guy next to him has revolver stereo. So then we wanted to make sure the color was different. But also, this is a more expensive headset. This retails for around $149. Uh -huh. So at this price point, the customers are definitely more familiar with higher end materials. So we actually went ahead and matted this um, to give it more of a high end premium feel or look. And then we uh, rubberized it to give it more of a high end feel, I should say. So okay. you get a higher end look and feel. So that way, when they're spending the extra money, they're getting the Dolby 7.1, they're getting all the refinements and all the benefits that we learned from um, from having the existing model in the market. And we also dialed in the microphone a lot more with this Dolby dongle. So that way you get a lot less background noise, more clear, more natural voice. Um, so focus groups, esports, end users, reviews online, forums, and our own experience all kind of led to these decisions. It's great to know. Yeah. And <clears throat> I know you are 
the audio guy, mm -hmm. and uh, taking that you talked about the wireless, I'm not going to ask you about the next product, but you feel that maybe if you nail down uh, the wireless stuff, mm. uh, maybe it could trickle down to the other peripherals? I mean, I don't, I don't see why not. I mean, I think even in those markets where wireless is limited, because it seems like people are more prone to want to try a wireless headset than to try a wireless mouse or keyboard. Uh -huh. um, if the market speaks up and that's what they want, then yeah, we'll listen for sure. Because we're already actively looking at, you know, available markets in the major countries and you can get reporting that actually shows, you know, out of the one million mouse that were sold in the U.S., this is just hypothetical. Uh, 95% were wired and 5% were wireless. If we start seeing that change, if we start seeing more people adopt wireless technology, then we'll respond with a product announcement of our own. Um, okay. So yeah, I think it's feasible, definitely. Okay. Maybe, maybe in the future? Yeah, maybe, maybe. What's your favorite feature of all of the cloud um, headsets? I know it's just a personal mm. opinion, yeah. but we always like cherish personal uh, yeah. opinions. No, I mean, I think I'd have to just say comfort because that's the biggest game changer for me. So before we ever launched any headsets, we actually brought in like 150 competitor samples. Uh -huh. And for the before we ever launched headsets, we all started wearing them for a long time and started saying, okay, what is good about this headset? What's not good about it? What can we, how can we improve this in end user experience for our fans? And the biggest thing was I couldn't wear many of the headsets for more than 35 minutes to an hour before I'd start getting really tired yeah. or my, my, I would just like want to take them off. I just want to get them off my head. So what I think the team did here, and I can't take all the credit for it because I'm just a business guy. The product design team are the guys who really spent hours and hours and hours uh, meticulously looking at the details to make sure that the comfort was really good. Uh, because actually for a lot of people, they'll sacrifice other features of headsets to have something that's really comfortable. So I think that's something that our team's done really well. And regardless of the price point, we have our Cloud Stinger that retails for only $49. I actually use the Stinger because it's so comfortable, I just never let them off my head. They're very light too, yeah. right? Very yeah. light. So, And you still get a great sound performance out of them. Is it as good as this or do you get the Dolby? No, because um, it's an entry-level headset, but you still feel like you're getting a great value, a great experience, a good comfort, good durability, and, and good sound for the price. One Final technical question, just to end sure. the video. Uh, sure. How easy are these uh, drivers? Do you need like an amp or a motherboard, mm. a high-end motherboard, just to be able to provide enough power? Um, I, I, I should assume that no, you, you don't. You do not need, but just for people that might wonder about this. No, it's a good question. And, Because and I think the, like, the drivers are huge, maybe like 50 millimeter. They're 50. Yeah. Yeah, they're 50. Um, so it does depend on the device that you're plugging into because that will ultimately control the output that's available. Um, you're always going to get a better am or whatever amplified experience through USB because USB uh -huh. just allows more power. There's chips in here that push out a bigger sound stage and allow you to crank up the volume if you're one of those people that likes to really listen to high volume. So you're always at the burden of whatever you're plugging into. For instance, if you were to plug this into a console controller for stereo, um, then you're still going to get a good sound experience, but it might not be as loud as you want it to. So I always recommend for those guys, plug into the USB or use it on the PC. Um, so you don't need a, a high-end sound card to make these work, but um, the better sound equipment that you have in the system you're plugging into, the better overall experience you're going to have for the headset. Excellent. Okay, yeah. thank you very much, Tyler. No problem. Uh, thank you very much for coming. Is there anything else you want to add about the, the Revolver S of the lineup? Just um, like the final thoughts? No, I think what I would just say is that there's a lot of exciting things that are still to come. Um, we're really happy with how we've gotten so far, and we have our fans to thank for all the success that we've had in all of our markets, including Argentina. Uh, and we're going to keep building great products for you guys, so I would say keep your ears out and uh, look forward to something exciting coming later this year, and then something again coming exciting at the beginning of next year from us. Great to know. Thank cool. you. Thank you. Nos vemos en próximos videos. Chaman, ¿lo conoces a este? ¿Se suscribió al canal? ¿A las redes? Llévenselo.